Health, and I am here with my guest today, Claudia Freelander, who has written this fabulous book, Complete Vocal Fitness. And we're going to talk a little bit about what she's done and why. Hi, Claudia. So happy to have you here with us. Oh, I'm so excited to be talking to you about fitness. Yeah. Oh, it's a passion, right? Well, yeah. And uh, one of the nice things about having the book out is that I've had more opportunities to just nerd out about anatomy and fitness with other people who are interested in singing and body issues. And, you know. So, um, can you tell us a bit, bit about your background? What brought you to this? I became interested in singing and fitness at around the same time. I'd always wanted to be a singer, but when I was a kid, nobody wanted to hear me sing because I just had a very sort of harsh, disorganized voice. Um, I couldn't get cast in any of the school musicals, and it was very heartbreaking. So I picked up the clarinet, and I got really good at that. And everybody wanted to hear me play the clarinet, so I just settled in with that. Um, it was around the time that I finished my undergraduate degree that I had the opportunity to do some body work uh, with uh, a therapist who was really good at helping to relieve chronic muscular tension, and I discovered that I had all of this muscular unring around my breathing, around my throat, around my articulators, that had been keeping me from being able to sing freely. Uh, and so all of this tension started letting down, and I was able to have just have access to my body again, uh, and I discovered that in fact I did have a pleasing voice. Uh, so I started taking singing lessons, and uh, began formal study, and I was surprised to discover when I went to graduate school that not everybody had the same expectation that I did, which is that it's possible to affect structural changes in your own anatomy that will then make your voice better, um, and that found out that most voice teachers expect that the instrument that the student brings into the room is the instrument that they have, we're going to teach them how to use that instrument. Um, well, I already knew for a fact that it's, it's possible to improve upon your instrument. In my case, it made the difference between not being able to sing at all and being able to sing really well. So, as I became more and more interested in vocal technique, um, I became really interested in finding out ways that I could help singers improve their own instruments so that they could really just optimize their bodies for peak performance and singing the way that athletes do for peak performance and whatever sport they're playing. Right. And uh, how do you view singers as vocal athletes? Like, it's very physical, demanding thing that we do as with our voices, but it involves the whole body. So, um, yeah, you feel that we need to train more like athletes? We need to train both more like athletes and more like instrumentalists. Um, instrumentalists learn things about repetition, motor learning, how to habituate new skills, because they have to integrate an external object coordinate well with their own bodies. So they learn some things about that. They also instrumentalists generally understand how their instrument functions, how it's constructed, so that they know that if there's a problem with the instrument, they know how to repair it. If I have like a missing pad on my clarinet, it's not going to play, but I know either how to do that myself or take it someplace where I can get it repaired. So I think we have a lot to learn from instrumentalists. And we also have a lot to learn from um, from athletes and from fitness trainers. Uh, because we are athletes more than, than we are. What we do is so similar to what uh, elite athletes do. Because an elite athlete doesn't stop being an athlete once they step off the court. They need to view their bodies as, um, as an athletic tool at all times. Yeah. So how you, how you care for your physical health, how you eat, how you sleep, is all going to have an impact on how you do your job. Yeah. Being so, so being a singer is a lifestyle it's a lifestyle choice. Yes. Yeah, I mean, if you want to optimize performance, you do need to make that. I, I mean, I know for myself, when I had started training for triathlons, and all the triathletes, I mean, they would say, this is a lifestyle. It's not just, you know, we're training and doing it. It's, we live it. And, yeah, so similarly, singers should be approaching that we are living our instrument is uh, a living instrument too, so it needs that extra care. Yeah, it does. I mean, we're also hedonists. We're not going to have anything yeah. to sing about if we don't have full <laughs> lives as well. So, yes. um, I do. there is a, a chapter on nutrition in this book, but I'm not advocating that people adhere to some kind of like really stringent diet so that they're always able to. Like, it's not quite what you need to do if you're a triathlete. Um, so, we do need to be mindful of using food as fuel, the same way that athletes do, and making sure that we are fueling our activities appropriately and tending to the health and development of our bodies.
these instruments, but we also need to have yeah, we have to let our hair down yeah, once the in a crazy while. experiences <laughs> yeah. that uh, that yeah. artists must yes yeah, yeah that happens so. <laughs> yeah. um, but of course you know there are certain limits we need to draw too yes. right I mean about like post performance you know going out to uh, you know drinking with your castmates when you know you have to perform the next day is probably a good idea yeah. you need your sleep you need to make sure you're refueled so you recover well for the next next thing that's coming up so, oh, ab absolutely yeah. Um, we, yeah. we need to be mindful of what um, our bodies need to do, and I've discussed uh, in the chapter about nutrition and on um, medical issues what best practices are that I would recommend uh, for seniors to do in terms of how they moderate what they're eating and drinking. We're, we're here at Nats in Las Vegas, so yeah. <laughs> of course, yeah, Vegas. Um, what uh, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> There's, um, there's a section in the medical chapter on um, how, how to drink reasonably and how to avoid a hangover. And I thought about printing out, like, here's a PSA on um, what to do for a hangover that I thought about leaving at my publisher's booth. And then my husband was like, you know what, you don't want to presume that all your colleagues are going to be drinking. It would be funny, but maybe don't go there. So I did, but there's some good advice on how to make sure that you're not drinking too much and what to do about it the next day if you have. And, um... Well, I know most singers, when they talk about fitness, usually in, in the studio, I hear from so many teachers, I mean, it's sort of limited to yoga. And uh, I, I know there are singers out there who are you know, training more, running marathons and stuff too, but it still seems to be kind of this stigma about working out too hard. So uh, what are your views on that? Yeah, traditionally, voice teachers have been very concerned about... Um, having their students work out too hard. And I think the reason for that is because when, especially performers go to the gym, they want to they want to look good on stage, they want to look good in HD, now that we're having more and more upper broadcasts. Um, and if you have a workout regimen that is limited to just like pumping up your glamour muscles, you're probably going to throw your whole instrument out of balance. Uh, because when we think about the muscles that, uh, that are visually, you know, aesthetically desirable right now. We're talking about, you know, wanting six-pack abs, and then we want, like, nice, well-defined pecs, you know, women who want to define their arms. Uh, but if you just, like, focus on those little parts, rather than looking at the body as a whole and asking, how can I optimize my whole physical structure for peak performance in, in singing, then what you end up doing is overdeveloping the glamour muscles, underdeveloping the muscles that need to stabilize them, and you can really throw things out of whack. For example, if I just want to go and pump up my chest a lot, this muscle here, my pectoral muscles, are going to get tight, and it's going to pull my shoulder in like this. And my head's going to come forward like that, and then where's my larynx, right? Whereas if you go about developing your strength in a way that's balanced and intelligent, I can build up my pecs if I also stabilize my shoulders, and then I'm going to have a better base of support for displaying my glamour muscles, and I'm going to be able to maintain good alignment. So what I've tried to do with this book is to explain um, how sports scientists go about assessing uh, a client or an athlete and noting where do they have some weaknesses, where do they have some overactive muscles, where are their imbalances, and then just assigning a program to bring the entire musculature into balance. So aesthetic goals are definitely something that you can pursue within a program that is achieving balance and the kinds of stability and strength that we need as singers. Um, but if you pursue a fitness regimen for the purpose of aesthetics, you might do damage to your voice. Whereas if you pursue an athletics regimen for the purpose of optimizing your body for peak performance and singing, you can also wrap in your aesthetic goals and get more oh, yeah. The aesthetic goals are the icing on the cake if you're actually yeah. pursuing a healthy lifestyle and balance in the workouts, right? So it's going to get there so you don't have to... Uh, focus on particular things. If you focus on the whole, then yeah. you're going to, I mean, just like any other athlete too, right? They do cross training because uh, you need to have that balance. If you're just, you're going to end up overworking certain muscles and you're more prone to injury. And, and as for singers, of course, throwing off alignment is going to throw off your whole voice. One of my mantras is form follows function. Right. Um, which is that if you do everything you need to do to be a spectacular, highly functional vocal athlete, 
you're going to look the way that someone who is striving to be an athlete looks. Um, and that's going to be different for each one of us. Our, our bodies and our instruments and our voices are so incredibly unique. Uh, and so this is why I really encourage people to really just pursue what they feel is important for their own balance, for their own strength, and then find out, you know, what is the aesthetic that you end up evolving? Because if we just take some sort of aesthetic ideal and try to make ourselves look like that, it's no more useful than saying, like, well, this is my favorite singer, and I'm going to try to sound exactly like her. Because you might be able to mimic them, but it will never be as amazing as if you cultivate your own authentic voice. Right. Yeah, that's so important to have your individuality in involved in in that, all aspects of your instrument. So, yeah. um, yes, and, and then the other thing with yoga too, um, I, how do you feel that yoga and other somatic uh, works, body work can fit in with or complement doing uh, weight training or resistance training? Yoga is fantastic. Yeah. Um, yoga is wonderful. Uh, there we have yoga teachers out there who are specializing in helping singers you know, integrate a yoga practice into what they're doing with their singing. Um, shout out to Mark Malaterno and Sarah Whitten, uh, who are both doing wonderful work in, uh, in, in this area. Um, it's not instead or in addition to, it's just it's another modality. Um, I've, I've found yoga to be a wonderful practice. I need to get back into it and do more of it. Uh, but it's just a fantastic whole body ancient practice that uh, is also very good for not only strength and flexibility but mind body integration. And so I think it's a wonderful practice for seniors to engage. Uh, what I'm promoting with, with the book is just more of a sports specific approach to training. What, uh, what fitness trainers do when they've got an elite athlete that they're trying to prepare to you know, win that gold medal or, um, or do, do better for their team in their sport. And that's just taking a step back, looking at like what are the assets that an athlete needs to be able to do their job well with the movements they need to excel at, or do they most need strength and flexibility? Do an assessment of that athlete and note where um, they've got some strengths, some weaknesses, how to bring them into better balance, and what you need to focus on to make them excel at the movements that they need to be engaged in when they're playing their sport. Uh, so I've done a bit of an analysis of that for what the local athlete needs to do, uh, and. There's a collection of exercises and directions in the book, but you don't need to use these exercises. You can go to the yoga studio, you can go work with a fitness trainer. Uh, what I want for my readers to understand is that like, okay, so these are the things that I need to work on, these are my goals. And so what's the modality, what's the routine that is going to be the most enjoyable that I'm going to stick to and it's going to help me achieve those goals? And um, all right, I know you said that you have to look at the whole body. But if you could, if you had to give just three exercises that a singer should include in their workout routine, what would they be? Well, as I said in the book, I was reluctant to actually say, okay, so this is the singer workout because everybody needs such individual special things. It's for the same reason that, like, the voice teaching that uh, the voice lesson that you get from your teacher is not necessarily going to be the same lesson that the other colleagues in the studio are going to get from that that teacher. Um, that said. One of the things that I think is most important for singers is to be able to stabilize their shoulders um, so that they can maintain an open and relaxed ribcage, um, well, not necessarily dynamically engaged ribcage while they're singing. Um, a very common problem that uh, I see in singers of, of all stripes is that sometimes you have the chest collapse and what's turned actually pressing down to drive air out of the lungs as you sing. And this is going to not be great for the biomechanics of your larynx and everything else like that. So this is one of the reasons that I got into this, because I would see my students doing this, and I would say, no, you know, you need to let your sternum stay high. Well, how do you do that? Um, having high sternum, to get my resistance here, um, means that uh, you are able to stabilize your shoulders, right? The rhomboids, the middle and lower trapezius, um, are these muscles that are in between your scapula, stabilize your shoulders. So, uh, you can try this yourself uh, if you just sort of like slump forward a little bit and then bring yourself back up into good alignment. You're going to feel how it's those muscles between your shoulders that do that. And so while I don't recommend doing exercises in isolation, this is something that I do incorporate in the studio, which is to um, engage those muscles. And I would put it in my hands on the on a student's shoulder so they can feel it going and then have them actually exhale and vocalize 
while pulling on the resistance band so that those muscles in the back stay engaged. And you can see that my, my sternum is actually getting pulled up a little bit as I do this. Um, so focusing on engaging, strengthening, stabilizing the scapula, uh, the muscles between the shoulders, the rhomboids, the middle and lower trapezius, and also then massaging the upper trapezius. Right? So there's another thing that I can recommend. We all tend to be a little bit overactive with the upper trapezius, right? And if I'm elevating my shoulders, all of this is encroaching on space that I need around my neck to do my vocalizing. So being able to release that muscle is important, and one good way to do that is to just take a small massager, which I'm going to turn this on, but, um, and I can hold this on my trapezius. I'm just like, I don't know if you can see, I'm going around to the back, and I'm going to just elevate my shoulder, I'll roll it around to the back and down, and then straight up, I'm not going to come forward with it while I'm massaging it, and that's going to help that upper trapezius release, so that it's a little bit easier for me to engage my shoulder stabilizers and avoid having the shoulders come up to my ears. So that's, I think that's a pretty good example. These are a couple of things that I think are important for most singers. I don't think any of you have a teacher who wants you to elevate your shoulders while you're singing. Um, if they do, that's okay. I can help you strengthen that movement too, but I'd rather that you didn't. <laughs> um, but just being able to release that muscle and stabilize the shoulders, these are things that I can't really help you to do in the context of a voice lesson. But if I take you to the gym, I'm going to be able to show you how to contact and work on those muscles so that you develop better length and formations between them and be able to do things like keep your sternum elevated very easily while you're sitting rather than thinking about it. To keep your sternum up, sternum up, and just kind of stay there. Okay, great. So, thank you so much for being here. I think this has been a lot of great information. Um, where can people find your book? find my book anywhere. Um, it's available uh, from, from Amazon. It's available from most booksellers, but um, I've, got a, I've got a code that I'm going to give to Elizabeth that if you order it directly from Roman and Littlefield, you can get 30% off. Wow, that's um, a great deal. So, yeah, so uh, can you append that information to yep, when you I'll, post it? Yep, okay, I will. Okay, so uh, just look below for this information, and uh, you should be able to get a discount on both the Back, hardcover, and the ebook, um, and I will, I will make a recommendation for the ebook here because if you like having a physical book and you want to write notes in it, like I do, you know that that's great. And I'm so happy with the way that the artwork came out. But the ebook has the illustrations and the photographs in color, um, and they look really beautiful and they're even clearer and easier to see. Um, so check out the ebook before you decide. And um, online, they can find you at your website, yes. the Audio Liberated Voice. Com. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and, uh, you have a great blog, so you should check out Claudia's blog as well. Um, thank you so much for, for it's so wonderful to meet another voice teacher, singer who's enthusiastic about fitness. Um, and thank all of you for tuning in. Uh, I, if you read the book and like it, you have feedback for me. Please get in touch. I want to hear. Um, what you all think of this, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to be in touch with those as well. Well, thanks again, and uh, thank you for watching. See you again later. <laughs>